It's going down, and you're invited for what they selling. We ain't buying. There is no running. There is no hiding. There's only fighting or dying. It's going down, and you're invited for what they selling. We ain't buying. There is no running. There is no hiding. There's only fighting or dying. It's Going Down is a digital community center from anarchist, anti-fascist, autonomous, anti-capitalist, and anti-colonial movements. Our mission is to provide an autonomous and resilient platform to publicize and promote revolutionary theory and action. Go to itsgoingdown.org for daily updates. Check out our online store for ways to donate and rate and follow us on iTunes if you like this podcast. My name is Tiwani. I'm from uh, I'm from Central Oregon. I'm from the Sonashu Taich Band, which is uh, the band of uh, Tai Valley, Tai Valley, which is in Central Oregon, on the Warm Springs Reservation. And um, uh, these these guys, my partners out here. Uh, I'm Nanokasi, and I'm from the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe. My name's Keith Picotti. I'm from the Walker River Paiute Tribe here in Nevada. Uh, White Rabbit. From Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm Abian from Portland. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and uh, for all these people coming together to talk about this. So walk us through what's happening in so-called Nevada. They want to build this lithium mine. Talk to us about the area, its history, and just kind of explain for everybody listening what exactly is at the heart of this struggle. So uh, basically... uh Thacker Pass, as most people know it, um, we call it Pahimaha. The Paiute and Shoshones, we call it Pahimaha. That means rotten moon. And the story behind that name is basically the cavalry, the army, they came in early one morning and there was a native camp up there on the Thacker Pass. And these, these uh, soldiers, they came in and basically started just killing all the people there while the men and the hunters were all um, off going, doing uh, doing hunting. So basically they went in there and killed them all, except for two. They took two babies. And basically those are the ch- children that took on the name Thacker. And um, there's another man that got away. His name was uh, Ox Sam. And he was able to give a recount of what happened with that basically saying he was never able to see his mother his father his brothers and sisters any of them anymore because they were all killed and basically what the cavalry did after they killed all these people is they went through all the all the tents pulled out all the bodies and they started gutting them pulling out all their guts and throwing them all over the sagebrush so when the hunters came back, they they smelt like a real rotten smell. And when they came over the pass and seeing what was hap- seeing what they they found, that's what what it was. Their their people's guts and just their people all thrown all over the land, disrespect. So um, basically, that whole valley right there, the whole Thacker Pass Valley, it's. Um, we consider it a, a sacred site because those people were never given proper burial and, you know, they were laid out the way they were. So in a way they are, that is their graveyard and that's their grief site. So we consider that a, a real sacred site. And for this, this mining company, uh, Lithium Nevada, Lithium of America is, uh, most people should know them. They're, um, from Canada, they're Canada based. But basically, they're trying to come in and saying that this massacre didn't happen. And according to the BIA and BLM, in their records, they specifically stated that it happened. And they are not acknowledging the fact that this has happened there. And they still want to push through and get this lithium mine through. Because bottom line, it's it's because of Joe Biden's green project or whatever and bottom line is he just um they're calling it the largest lithium deposit in the world so 
you know, like that's that's pretty much the backstory on why why we consider you know Pahimaha or Thacker Pass a sacred site for us. And, and not only that, along with that, there traditional hunting grounds there, traditional foods, medicines, you know. So if they da- they damage the land there, it's not just gonna harm just the people, the animals, and the things that we use that everybody uses. They're not going to be able to be there no more. So, um, basically that's what we're, uh, that's our viewpoint on it. And, uh, you know, hopefully everyone out there can, uh, understand where we're coming with that because, you know, as native people, we've been pushed aside and considered non-existent. So this is our way of showing everybody in the world that we're still here and we're not, we're not going to be pushed around no more. We're, we're done with that. Yeah, this lithium project is part of the ongoing genocide of Native people, not just here, but across the whole globe. You know, they fought that lithium mine down in Bolivia. They're fighting that lithium mine down in Arizona. And this continued extraction and land theft is um, is genocide. And it's, you know, as Indigenous peoples, we believe like we are a part of the land. The land is a part of us. And these multi-billion dollar corporations are just, they just keep coming in left and right across Indian country right now. And Indian country, native country, you know, our, our country is just under attack right now. So I feel when you look across the country, there's, there's fights going on on the East Coast, you know, uh, up, up in uh, Ojibwe country, down in Apache country, right here in Paiute country. It's, um, it's it's pretty big and, and um you know what we're up against is 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 really big because you know like the military industrial complex is, is involved and has a lot to do with it because they they use this lithium to the full extent on all of their new equipment their high technology and all that stuff so i mean that's really what we're up against here you know and and uh it's it's really scary you know because um uh, <clears throat> you know we we've, we've had comrades who have been fighting the same battle you know what i'm saying and and um and it's gone it's gone to to real far extents you know what i'm saying and, and um where we're at right now right here is just it's you know it's just kind of like the base it's, it's the forefront of, what, of what's about to happen because it's coming and there's already been a little bit of activity up there because we got we got you know there's several sites that are proposed not just right there at the Himaha. there i mean that's a whole mountaintop that's just one they have more in, in, in the Oregon side, and then they have some over in the Hawaii reservation. If you look at it, they're all in reservations. And um, right there, over on the other side of the peak right there from Pahima, uh, there's the uh, there's uh, what they call Disaster Peak. And there's a, there's a high lithium deposit back there, and that's where there's been activity lately. So, you know, we're, we're, um, we've been trying to keep an eye back there, too, because it's not, you know, it's it's... It's accessible, but, you know, we have people that are, you know, that are posted up right there in Fort McDermott, right there in the town, and, and they're kind of keeping an eye for us, and they've been seeing a lot of activity. So, it's, you know, I mean, it's it's starting to kind of rumble a little bit, you know, and, and, and um, like I said, it's the forefront, and, you know, it's just, that's a, that's coming from us right here, anyway. Yeah, um, a lot of us are frontliners, too, you know, a lot of us do believe uh, of a land back you know you should give us our land back let's let's just recreate what's already created you know why why build a plant when it destroys us why don't we just plant plants from from seeds you know um i've been everywhere i feel like been fighting for a long time you know with my relatives here on the phone you know with all the sacrifice we do you know the sacrifice is for the future generations, the young ones, more younger ones that are coming up on the way. You know, they're, they're going, I don't want to see the young ones suffer. You know, um, but I'm still, I'm still in the fight. I don't even care what what happens to me. But as long as I do it for the elders and for the children, that's what I'm there for. A question to one of the first speakers. They were saying that the official. Um, stance of the lithium company is that the massacre did not happen that's what they're saying yes that's um according to what information we've gotten 
from legal side anyway is um they they um don't acknowledge the fact that it happened even though BLM has records of it and there's documentation by other people like a I guess a manuscript or something like that mm-hmm. written by by um by somebody that was um I guess a part of it or was a relative of somebody that was a part of it and they they actually were able to interview Oxam the man that was able to get away from the the camp before he was killed so um that's their BLM has that information and they know they have it because um it's been looked up it's there in their documents the it's just the fact that they don't want to acknowledge it they see that this they hear it's the biggest lithium deposit in the world so to them that's more or less a big paycheck coming to them we let this come through okay government's going to send us more funding so we'll have bigger paychecks and that's the way it's going to always be they're always just going to look for that dollar sign and other people were talking about how this is part of you know biden's supposed push for renewables i know um a, a lot of this stuff is going to be used supposedly in batteries if it goes through like uh for cars or different batteries somebody else was talking about how there's a lot of tie into the military industrial complex and different stuff can can you talk a little bit about that like what are the environmental impacts like what exactly will this mine mean for the land? So basically, the proposed mine that they want to do, they want to dig 400 feet into the ground so that they can get to the lithium. But this new process they want to use, they want to use sulfuric acid to leach out all that lithium. But they need all these other minerals that are in it too, nickel, cobalt, copper, all of this. They need all of that just to make a lithium battery. And as everyone should know, sulfuric acid, no matter what kind of filter it goes through, there's no filter in the world or known to man that can filter out those toxins when they get pushed out into the air. And they want to do an actual processing plant right there on the same site as the mine, as well as another one somewhere in a uh, close Reno. in Reno. So basically, there will be two processing plants, one going in Reno and then one at the actual proposed mine site. And with all of that going on, the way the valley is set up, the wind blows down towards the reservation. So, and towards the people of Orvada and all these other surrounding communities by it. The impact would be a 150 mile radius and basically that if everyone most people know around here that these winds are not they're not forgiving they they blow pretty tough and through that pass it's they're pretty heavy so that wind will carry a lot of that that pollution all those all those things that they say that their filters are going to be able to clean out of the air and make sure it's all safe there's no such thing as a safe processing plant there's no filter in the world that's going to be able to clean have like nice fresh air and water basically what they're going to do is um that's the other thing they want to they're trying to buy out all these ranchers and and stuff so that they can get hold of their aquifers their their water land their water rights so that they could use that to process the lithium as well and basically that's going to be up to like like upwards of a million gallons almost an hour and I don't even think we have enough water to even sustain ourselves for that. So how, where are they getting all this water from? And bottom line is there's, there's no way that they're going to be able to put this land back the way it needs to be after they dig a 400 foot pit, use up all the natural water, clear out all these natural plants and animals. There's no way all of this is going to come back. They call it, they say they're going to reclaim it reclaim the land and make it so everything will live again and there's always stories that oh yeah reclaim land it's gonna there's animals that go back there things go back to normal but are they really i don't think so i know we're going to talk about what's been going on with people being pushed out of their homes in a bit but talk to us about how people started fighting this thing well it started i've been involved 
probably since about since they um I was aware of a horse ride that was back in I believe June, May or June. May. May. That 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 was put together by by some natives down here, and um, I, I was I was become aware of it, you know, and um, they told me, you know, because I come from Warm Springs, and and um, this is right up the right up the river, you know, and say right across the valley over there, so we're not very far. This is this is our backyard, so this is our fight too, you know. So I was like, well, I'm gonna come down and check it out. We got down here, and and um, ever since then, you know, it's just it's kind of been, you know, people been coming, been getting the word out, you know. And that's that's about how long I've been involved. They've been fighting this though for uh what about seven years? Yeah. Year, seven years in the courts. And, you know, I mean, we know how the justice systems work. That's about how far we've got. So now it's time for boots on the ground. I mean, it's, it's taken that long. So that's that's where, you know, where we come came in about June, May, June. This mining company has always known this deposit's been here, but they've used this this president and his uh, so-called Greenpeace uh, plan to, you know, bring the bring the world back to, I guess, better emissions. You know, they're using that as a cover so that they come in and take all of this and destroy this land. That greenwashing. Pretty much, and that's greenwashing. And I know a lot of people may not like that term, but that's 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 exactly what it is. That's the world we're living in right now. We're living in a greenwashing world. But for me, I came out in about midsummer, so about July. Uh, my my good friends, um, Atwe Myron Dewey, and uh, my good friend uh, Twinny, they uh, they brought me out because uh, they felt that I had a I had something I could give to the camp, and um, basically, it's it was just me. Uh, me just being there was enough. And you know, I've I've heard it a lot from the elders. They respect it that you're standing there with them, doing what you know what they can't anymore. So um, you know, I've been there for a few months, but it's opened my eyes a lot to see what what this uh, company's trying to do to our people, to my people. Because I live here in Nevada. I'm not from this tribe up here, but they're my people. They're my brothers and my sisters, my uncles and my, my aunties, my grandmas and my grandpas. You know, even the nephews, nieces. I'm doing this for them so that they have a life, so that they can flourish. Is there currently like a protest camp? Yes. Yeah, there are a couple. We have a few uh, campsites set up, so, you know... um Whenever you show up, just, you know, I, we just ask, come self-sufficient, help out in any way you can, and, um, you know, just, uh, respect, uh, respect the indigenous protocol and, you know, what the elders have, uh, asked and requested of us, uh, to hold down that ground because it is a prayer. We're holding a prayer there and we don't need anything that comes in to, uh, disrupt that prayer or try to um, throw it off the rails, I guess. Yeah, everybody who's familiar with Standing Rock, you know, that camp, basically the same rules. Same rules. You know, just uh, basic protocol, you know, no drugs and alcohol, things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Those are like the main things, you know, no, um, you know, respect women, respect children, you know, respect the earth, you know, respect to spirit, you know, things like that. That's, and, um, and uh yeah and and, and when, we, when we mean self sufficient we just kind of mean um as in you know be prepared for the, for the weather cuz it gets cold up there where it's on a mountain top and it gets windy it could, it could get like north dakota at times and um you know it, it, you know i mean we cuz we're all together we all take care of each other you know what i'm saying we're all we're all one here you know and um and like you said you know we got we got a couple different camps set up so you know it's it's you know we got room for people it's all it's all there and they actually haven't they haven't started construction or digging or anything. No. No, they they're still they're at the process of uh, the archaeologists. Well, let's let's talk about um, what's been happening with these evictions. Can you explain the situation? It's a, it's a this is a small town down here. It's in uh it's right, kind of right up uh, in the middle of Nevada, and it's it, you know I mean it's it's a mining town. It's an old mining town. 
you know, it's just kind of like a regular, it's got a little Walmart and everything like that, but they have an Indian colony here, right? And it's basically a reservation, but it's a uh, kind of wild west it's because it, you know, it's, it's, it's real, it's, it's kind of peculiar because it don't have the, the, the BIA don't have jurisdiction here. The city don't have jurisdiction. The feds don't have jurisdiction. So kind of almost lawless. So, and was given to the natives here. This land was given to the natives. It's, it's originally they were given a land a little bit further up the hill, but they settled here because it's closer to town. And this was the end of town at the time. But since then, you know, the town has expanded around it and it's, you know, it's right in the middle of town. So basically the attitude here is, you know, uh, these, for these, these, uh, these multi-million dollar companies that, that from what I see is basically, you know, get these guys out of here so we can use that land, you know, and, and that's kind of basically how they're coming at us. So our, our, you know, I mean, at these elders right here and, and it's a small, it's a small little, um, basically about two city blocks and it's all elders and children and um you know they since um that lady that they were talking about that uh judy rojo. jody judy rojo she she's the one who who runs this colony she has the deed or however you would say like she's head mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but and the people here don't recognize her she's not recognized so anyway she's been um writing articles and stuff talking about this place saying that you know it's uh it's drug infested and this and that you know there's drug paraphernalia you know we've been here for two weeks and i haven't seen one i haven't seen one drug infested person i haven't even seen anybody drunk all i've seen is elders and children and even if it was it's it's still they still don't deserve to have their homes pulled those you know yeah no so i mean my point you know i mean my point is, is is just that you know i mean she's she's saying things that ain't true about this colony so I mean, um, so, I mean, you know, basically where we're at right now is just we're, we're, um, we have, we have a, um, we have a camp, we've established a camp here, you know, and, and people have been coming because we, when we came two weeks ago, let me get back to that. When we came two weeks ago, we had, we, we, um, I seen a call out, a friend of mine was on there and she had a live and she was, you know, she, she was showing us what was going on and, and there was a bulldozer I seen and they were standing in front of it. And I was like, well, what's going on? I asked her and she told me. And I asked her if she needed our help. So we came down that night. And that next, that next morning, sure enough, there they were. They came out and, um, we had, you know, we went out there and, and, um, chased them away. You know, there was enough of us, luckily, you know, so we all went out there and locked arms and chased them away. And they haven't been back because we've been holding ground and, you know, we've established a prayer camp. We've been holding prayer. We've been having sweat lodge. You know, we've been drumming and singing um dancing you know we have we brought the jingle dress out you know we've been marching we've been doing uh actions you know we're just we're bringing it you know as much as we can for these elders you know but we're you know at the same time you know we're keeping consideration that these are it's the elders it's the elders community these are elders so we're doing the best we can to keep you know it as peaceful as we can you know yet in the colony we have people that you know are against us and, you know, they work for Judy Rojo, you know, and, and as in, you know, like she takes care of them and, you know, they call her up every time they see something, you know, they got cameras set up outside of their house facing us, you know, so they can report to her, you know, and everything like that. And they, and their house is really nice over there. You know, it, they, you know, and, and, and they're, they're not very nice, you know, they flash guns at us, things like that, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, so we have that, you know, but, you know, I mean, since we've, since we've been here, you know, we've, we've just been praying, you know, and, and we've been protected by the power of prayer. That's what I believe, you know, and we've been holding them out because it's the elders community, as I said, and elders pray, you know, our, you know, that's how we believe. That's why our elders are so special. You know, they're our jewels and we hold them close. We're supposed to cherish them. They're not supposed to be treated this way. And, and, you know, this has gone way too far as it is. You know what I mean? So the more that we bring them out and the more that we pray, you know, the, the more, we will be protected because they are our elders and that's what they do for us. You know, as long as we can, we can take care of them and do for them like we're supposed to do as native people, you know, then they can take care of us with their prayers. And with that connection, you know, that's basically what we've been doing here is just praying and singing, dancing, cleaning up the community. We plan to make uh raise beds and put up some hoop houses, you know, so the, the elders can have a community garden if they choose, you know, Depending on the water situation, you know, because I mean, this is, you know, it goes back to that. 
you know, and, and especially being right here in the desert, you know, they have to watch their water too, you know, and, and it goes back to what we're fighting because these two, these two camps, these two areas are connected. They're connected. This Judy Rojo, she wants to bulldoze these houses and move these elders out because she wants to build homes for miners right here in this community. And, and that's basically just being bought out by these, you know, like I said earlier, uh, multi-billion dollar corporations will stop at nothing, you know, and they'll, you know, they'll evict these elders and they'll use their own people against us. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's basically what's going on here. And, um, you know, so right here where we're at right now, we're just, and we're going to be here until, you know, we know that these elders are safe. And, um, you know, that's kind of basically the bottom line, you know, and we know how it works in court because they're, you know, I mean, We've been fighting these court battles for so long, and it's basically never gone our way. So, you know, the ones that are here, we're ready to lock arms, you know, and, and hold them out any way we can because it's it's not right what's going on, you know. And, and um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm down to willing to fight for a lost cause. Um, I'm just going to just go by my prayers and with my relatives out there so mm -hmm. and the thing is too they're not giving people alternatives so like one of the people who had their home bulldozed two weeks ago now she's just crashing from friend to friend so people aren't even getting alternatives here and it's scary a lot of the elders here are living in fear where are they gonna go we actually have two of the elders here right now um who want to say something who are we talking to? It's going down. It's a, it's a new, new, news source. new source. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we, us elders here, we've lived here for over 40 years and, and we, uh, we don't like what, uh, they're doing to us here. And they're not really, they're an uh, interim council, but they go ahead and do whatever they please with us. They're not even supposed to be doing that because they're not per permanent council that's here. They're just temporary. And uh, some people, I guess the BIA are recognizing them, so they have to go ahead and think they can have their way with us over here. And I don't like that. I I want to put a stop to that. Somebody to put a stop to this here. I don't like what's going on because I got grandkids here and they go to school and things like that. And I, we really need help. We want to get it stopped. I don't want anybody to recognize them. I wanted to ask how many people's homes were recently bulldozed? There was at least three. And were you all given any sort of notice, or they just showed up and they... Nope. I think, like, uh, Elisa Dick over there, she had she was at work when they started that on her house. And some people texted her and told her she better get to her house because her Bob McNichols is ready to bulldoze her house. And they only gave her, like, only five minutes, I think, to get their stuff out of there so that they can crush their home and that's what they did they had two of them uh, uh, back holes or whatever you want to call them bulldozer the bulldozer house down and they were still in there when they done that they had to run out of there so they didn't have a chance to get any of their stuff or any of their belongings some they got some some of their stuff out and did they give you all like any sort of justification or they said we're on this person's authority or no they don't do anything like that mm -hmm. they just go to their place and start cleaning around your house and then they start on your home that's how they do things and nobody put a stop to them they keep it up they done that to three homes here and before that, they came and they cut up all of everybody's that weren't here, their electric, their water lines, their gas lines, their sewer lines. They don't give you no notice saying we're going to do this and that. They just go over there and do it.
because they can't break our spirit. What makes you such a threat? We choose the right to be who we are. We know the difference between the reality of freedom and the illusion. The other folks were saying that they want to build housing for miners for this big mine that people are opposing. Is that your understanding as well? Yes, it is. That's what they've been saying, that they were going to bring in some miners. Because we don't pay them anything for staying here. Mm-hmm. So they want somebody that's got the money to so they can build homes here for them, and they're going to start paying them rent. That's what they want. Mm-hmm. And I don't pay them rent because uh, they were court-ordered not to charge us any rent, but they don't listen. They don't abide by court orders. They go and do whatever they want to do. Well, for anybody that's listening, is there a way to support you and other people that have been, this has happened to It's horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. They're, they threaten our homes and uh, go and do whatever they want to do, and there nobody's stopping them. The BIA cops, we try to call them, and they said they have nothing to do over here on the colony. They got their own security that's not even recognized. They're probably all fake, saying that they're representing them, not us. 
we don't have no justice whatsoever here. Well, anything else you want to say to folks that are listening? Well, I'd like this stopped. I don't ever want her to come back over here and do the same thing to us. Mm-hmm. I want them out of there. I wish there were some people that would help us and get them out of there. I don't like what they're doing. Especially, you know, us elders. We, I can't handle it. There's too yeah. much stress. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Sure. Thank you for listening. Um, I would like to add that uh, I think it is very important um, if anybody and everybody who is available to get down to Winnemucca um, and be on the ground and just fight the good fight and then protect these elders and these children. Um, mm-hmm. um, donate if you can. Um, there's uh, multiple um, outlets out there for donations and we would appreciate any and any help can you all like for those that are listening just describe because i mean so far we've talked about there's protest camps and then there's resistance to these evictions that are happening like um on the uh sugar bush crew uh twitter there was recently some like photos of there was a march that y'all participated in um are these things close together or are they kind of spread out? Can you just help us kind of like understand where everything's at? Yeah, well, um, they're, we're here in the city of Winnemucca. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're, I guess we're a little ways away, but we have people there on the ground as well. So um, they have it correlated, but the more we're finding out, the more we're realizing that it's all all really tied together into this one big, one big picture that they really want. Like, do you feel that they that they want to bulldoze more homes first, and then they'll kind of go into the other development, or does one thing come before the other? Or is it all at the same time? They're all on the same. They're all on one. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, they're all they're all one, one thing connected. And um, you know, these elders they don't they don't appreciate this happening to them, and you know the. The fact that we're here has given them more, um, you know, more, I guess, uh, given them more peace of mind. And, you know, it, as indigenous people, we don't we don't like our elders being uh, pushed around and abused in this way. And, um, you know, it, it ties together because these mining companies have been doing this since, since time immemorial, since we've been around and since they've shown up. They have been doing this to us for 500 years. It's a continued continued genocide of our our people and our land. And basically, um, yeah, that's how that's where we stand on it, and that's how we feel about it. Um, I have another elder here that would like to speak as well. Um, I'll let him introduce himself. Okay, my name is uh, <clears throat> Dwayne Brown. I've been living here on the colony for about. Pretty close to 40 years. My kids were raised here, went to school here, graduated. And uh, since this started, uh, my kids are gone, but I've been living here ever since. And uh, I'm still living here, but I myself don't like what they're doing to us, you know, running the Indian people off of this colony. And uh, I'd like to this thing to end and uh, live in peace, you know. Do you see them coming back soon and trying to bulldoze more homes? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're pretty sneaky. Like uh, my sister was saying that uh, they go against court orders. So mm. do whatever they want. So that's why I'm afraid, you know. Got to stick close by your home. And how many people are living in that area right now? Uh, here at the colony? Yeah. Oh, I would say there's about maybe pretty close to 30. And it sounds like people that are they're standing up and coming out and support, they're helping at least push that back, at least for the time being? Yes, pretty much. Some of us, uh, I mean, some of the ones, uh, uh, they're not too helpful, but like... Um, a few I know, so some of us are trying to stand up, you mm-hmm. know, stand up 
our rights. Well, anything else you want to say? Oh, that's pretty much. But like, uh, I like to see them stop to stop. You know, uh, knocking our our, uh, our homes down and stuff like that. So, we appreciate you sharing with us. Thank you. Um, do you all want to talk about the march that happened recently? Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, um, it was just uh, uh, an action we had, and, and uh, uh, we put out a calling for uh, jingle dress dancers, and, and uh, we had uh, you know, one of our sisters, her her daughter, she came down and, and danced for us, and um, where the old, the original land I was talking about that that was given to them up the hill, that's where that's where we started, and um, she you know she put her footprints down on the ground there. And we marched. We had prayer. You know, we had a circle and, and uh, people spoke. And then we marched on down to uh, to the colony and ended here with uh, prayer, circle and prayer and uh, some songs. It was, you know, it was a uh, it was a beautiful march. Very beautiful. We got to the colony. We had uh, the elders lead us, lead us into the colony. Probably the most beautiful part. You're listening to It's Going Down, part of the Channel Zero Anarchist Podcast Network. Follow us online at itsgoingdown.org and on Twitter at IGD underscore news. If you like and appreciate this podcast, go to itsgoingdown.org slash shop and give us a one-time donation. Sign up to donate monthly or donate through Bitcoin. Again, that's itsgoingdown.org slash shop to support. And now, back to the show. Do you all want to talk about um, just the call for for people to, you know, engage in solidarity, come out, support? Just what does that look like? Where should they go to get more information? Yeah, Sugarbush. You, me- you mentioned Sugarbush earlier. Um, you know, wait, I mean, just basically, Winnemucca is a small town, so I mean, if people came, you come, you come to the colony. It's it's not very hard to find, you know. And there's, you know, I mean. And the camp's not very hard to find. It's right. It's right, pretty much in the middle of the colony. And you know, we're we're uh, we're we're op- we're you know open arms to everybody because it's gonna be it's gonna be a while because we have you know I mean they're fighting it in court and that won't be until what close to January or in January. So sometime it's it's a quite a ways away. So we're going to need people here, you know, pretty much the whole time because these guys are real sneaky. We, we seen how they are, you know, and we've been here, you know, and, and, um, it's, it's going to probably have to be that way for a while. You know, we can't, we can't just, you know, like leave and expect everything to be okay because we know we've seen what they've done. We've been seeing it in history, you know? So, you know, like basically the calling is, is for people to come and, and hold ground, hold space, you know, and come in a prayerful way, because like we said, this is a community of elders, you know, no firearms, no drugs, no alcohol, you know, we have children here, you know, and um, been doing a lot of singing, a lot of praying, you know, um, holding ceremony, you know, just in, in a good way, just being in a good way. So if you come, come in, you know, in a good way like that, you know, and, and uh, be ready to stand in front of a bulldozer, if that's what it's going to take, because that's that's really what we're asking. Because, you know, these, these courts, they just been, uh, been doing this to these, to these elders for like, you know, you heard them yourself for close to 40 years. You know what I'm saying? This, this, this thing has been happening. All these things have been happening, like from the stories I've been going back to the eighties, you know? So, you know, it comes down to that, the bottom line. And, you know, I mean, all we have is the power of the people, you know, so we need people like that, you know, who are willing to come out and lock arms and stand in front of these bulldozers. Because we know these elders are, they've already stated that, you know, and if they're going to do that, then, you know, we need to stand in front of them, you know, and protect them because that's the sacred, you know, and, you know, like, like you heard it from them yourselves, you know, it's, 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 it's tough here, you know, so with the stress that they've been through, you know, for, for the past, however long, you know, it's, it's been going on here, you know, this is the first I've heard of it. And, and it, you know, it bewilders me how it's gone this long, how it's gone this far, you know, and the stress that they live in, you know, not knowing where they're going to go, you know, thinking these things, you know, because these, these people are coming with these bulldozers, you know, it's a, they, you know, so with that, you know, I mean, this place needs healing. It needs, it needs songs. It needs dance. You know, we, we need to rejuvenate it with, with uh, prayer and love, you know, and, and, um and with that, you know, like physical things too, you know, like people who can build. You know, people who are plumbers, electricians, you know, 
help us build this community up, you know, gardeners, you know, so we could, uh, you know, we could show this Roho, what, you know, how elders are supposed to be treated, you know, how, how we as Native people treat our elders, you know, let's build them up here, you know, so I mean, that's, that's, that's the call out. That's what we need. We need people like that, you know, are willing to come out and do a little bit of work and spend some time, chop some wood, you know, help us uh, build up some of these porches and, and, and awnings and things like that, you know, fences, clean these streets up, you know, I mean, just, you know, I made a little bit of sweeping here and there, you know, it ain't too bad, you know, we just, you know, just things like that, you know, and, and, um, and, and be willing to pray, you know, sing songs, dance, you know, just, and, um, most of all, like I said, you know, lock arms and stand in front of a bulldozer. <laughs> probably stuff like food and, and other, like just basic supplies. That'd probably be a good thing people could bring to. Yeah. I forgot to mention that, that, uh, if, uh, it, you know, I mean, it, otherwise, if, if you can't be here, you know, you can't come physically, you know, your prayers, your prayers always count. Your prayers always work. Otherwise, you know, if, if you, if you, if you want to help out, you know, donate or, you know, send supplies, something like that, you know, uh, uh, get a hold of us through Sugarbush, through Sugarbush on Twitter. And, um, you know, and, and, and then we'll let you know how you can do that. Or, uh, or Keith Picotti on Facebook. And or if you have questions about the uh, Pahima, there's uh, D Hinky on Facebook and Gary and Ash. Do we want to just end with the go around and just anybody else want to share their thoughts? And and, you know, I really encourage people that are listening, um, you know, if you can, like contribute and we'll have a bunch of links. People can do that and hopefully come out in, so- in solidarity. But anything else you want to say? Um, I got a few words. Uh, I'll be heading over to Winnemucca, so I'll see y'all. I'll see y'all there with my drum. Oh, oh, oh! Land back. I just want to say, um, you know, thank you for giving us this time, and uh, you know, to everybody out there, thank you for giving us this platform to uh, say what we have to say, and you know, hear what these elders have to say. Because um, I know everybody out there has a grandma and a grandpa or an uncle and a, you know, auntie or a niece and a nephew that you really love. And you you wouldn't want this happening to them. Right. So bottom line is, you know, we're here for that. And if you want to come here, you know, you, you come here in that good way, like the brother said, and everything will be good. You know, we'll we're going to be here. We're going to see this thing through. I would like to also add that um, to push out a call out for any available and trained medics. We do not know what um, to prepare for, but we should always um, just be prepared for any and every tactic they may throw at us um, to push through. And uh, we're there to protect these elders and these children from these homes and from them to be displaced with no alternative, you know, for them to go anywhere. And so just to prepare, I think it's important just to have any available medics to come through, um, to, you know, train if they can do a training or if they can stay down there for a while and help, you know, stand with a good fight for these people. Um, that would be really important and crucial. This has been the It's Going Down podcast. Check it's going down.org for daily updates, columns, action reports, and news. Go to it's going down.org slash shop to support us and follow us on all social media platforms. IGD, your daily resource for insurgent proletarian life.